Hi, uh, back again. Zoe's behind the camera. Say hi, Zoe. Hi. Um, Zoe's been quite busy uh, the last week or so, getting bits ready elsewhere in the house. Because, um, like I said, we've got some guests coming uh, Christmas. And uh, one of the tasks today, is, as, as I mentioned earlier on this morning, is to uh, uh, box in with a door for those uh, cold water tanks. Now the door has to be large enough that I can get, uh, if ever, we have to um, get that large uh, water tank out. So I've got to bear that in mind. So I'm just going to cut this uh, piece of wood down to length and then put the angle on it. So I've cut it to length. Um, and now what I'm going to do is go down this end here. Once I've set up um, the uh, the saw, as close an angle as I can get. sure that I'm lined up with the corner. Just go around to the stairs and check whether or not this piece fits. I might have to trim it down. That's that's uh, quite quite often the way with me. There we go, that's perfect. All right, that's one done. So I now need to make sure that this door Put in here is wide enough for this to fit out or squeeze out of. So what I'm thinking, and I'll let Zoe tell me off if it's not what she's thinking. But at the same time, I also need to be able to get this plank in here. So if I put, because there's quite a bit of room this side of this tank to push that across if we ever need to get them out. So that's not a problem, but at the same time, I need to be able to make sure that I can get to get to this um, stopcock. So I'm thinking putting another another one just here, 400 mil off of this one, which would near yeah, set the tape measure. mil for there. No. If I go 250, no. Let's have a look. Why don't you get one put in the other side and then make your mind up? If I go 230, yeah, that brings the stud just here. Sorry, just this side of that um, valve. So that valve then, well that shut off cock will be in the door. Yeah? What do you think? Yeah, I'll do another one at 2.30. I'll go and cut another one um, down the same as this. Did it? Not yet, I'm just cutting the um, the angle on it.
Somebody still looks for it. Have you taken the mic up there? Yeah. That one goes in there, like so. I need that one there. So making sure that when I put them in place. Okay, so I'm thinking somewhere like that, or somewhere like that. Yeah, but straight. Ha ha ha. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to put a pencil mark exactly where it's going to go. So when I bring it back up. Okay, so if we say then that this is where the door's going to be, agreed? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just going to go and get my pencil. Pencil? My um, tape measure a second so I can measure the width of this tank. Then I can work out where um, the next lot of studs are going to go. I'm trying to make sure that none of the stud work is going to land anywhere near these pipes because it's just going to make it um, a nightmare. I should also point out um, at the moment that this wall is not a structural wall, um, which is why I'm not putting um, a top or bottom plate on. So I need to measure the top flange, so I'm just Pencil, remind me where it is. See, I was saying, why didn't you put the other end one in? So then you could measure where the door would go in. Because it's more important that for two two things, one that the door is wide enough that this wide enough and tall enough that this can come out. Two, sorry, three reasons. Two that I can get to this ball cock. Make that four reasons. And to, to, at any point, I need to shut off the water. We can. There's another one down here that uh, we might need to get to as well, but that's not so much so much of an importance because I should be able to get a screwdriver in there anyway and, and turn it a little short one. So what did we say it was? What did I say it was? Oh that's not the widest point, is it? Idiot. Okay, so 600, oh, that's pretty cool actually. So the next stud, so there's only actually four studs in here, plus what's going up here. So, right, 600, I need to jump down off of here again, so I can just put them up. You got your pencil. I got my pencil, pencil here. You got both because you've got your black one too. Somewhere. Yep. I'm just moving that up out of the way a sec. Oh, I was going to explain to you, to, to the viewers. Anyway, just moving me out, saw out of the way. And uh, what I'm doing. Let me get a bit 
bits of noggins. noggins. They always come in handy, especially when you haven't got a workshop. Right. Yeah. Sorry, just getting it the right way around. Um, Oh, I should mention that I'm using um, CLS timber and they are 65 by 40 mil or 39 mil. Um, this piece of timber doesn't fit in, so I'm going to have to make it so that it goes around the pipe or the pipe it can fit around the pipe. So, what I've got here is a 25 mil force and a bit um, and I'm just going to put a hole down through um, down through it if it will stay where I want it to is this, the force and the bits um, the battery uh, drills I've got just are not powerful enough to work them so I've, I've gotten a simple um, electric drill so I'm through onto the other side what I'm going to do now is go and find a saw and I'm just going to cut down through here and then square off um, with a chisel okay so that's my next job okay uh, there's one or two ways I can go with this um, I could have gone down the multi-tool route and cut that but I, I love these for plasterboard I love these for you know that type of work but when it comes to timber yes they do the job but I don't feel they're as accurate as some of the other tools and as, as always is the case the one tool that I wanted couldn't get to because well it's packed away um, and it's only packed away because of uh, doing the uh, bedroom upstairs so I'm using my granddad's um, saw. I'm still looking for tutorials or some way of sharpening and restoring this, but I haven't got it in me to, to throw it away. And I do believe it's an American brand anyway. So I think they're quite well, um, quite well looked after. And I believe my granddad said that they were his granddad's before him. So, you know, I'm fourth fourth generation to own them. So I'm sorry, but I am going to use it. And what I'm going to do here is just cut down um, the top of this uh, hole off. And then I'm going to neaten up with um, some, some chisels. Um, and the reason for the blocks of wood is just so that I don't ruin the floor underneath. Okay, um, I don't know if, if... Yeah, I think we've, in this country, we seem to have lost a lot of the traditional trades. Um, you know, like the people who used to sharpen uh, saw, saws, I don't know the, the trade name, but they just don't seem to be around any, anymore. I mean, when I was a kid, there used to be a van that came around. And, and would not just sharpen saws, he would do um, scissors, knives, all those sort of things. I mean, we're very... I was brought up in a very rural area, um, same as Zoe was. We even had a van that used to come around once a week 
and he would bring sweets, he would bring uh, pop, um, bread, that sort of thing. Once a week he used to come around. Um, and then we had another one that came around uh, a van and, and they did fish and chips. Um, because we didn't have a fish and chip shop in, sorry, I'm just concentrating a little. In the village you always brought up in. Yeah. Same like us. I don't know if it was the same for you, love. Yeah, we had a fish van come round. Every Friday, doing fish and chips. Yeah, parked yeah. at the playing fields. I had to walk to get them, but they were good. I was used to park right outside our house. Uh, we had a butcher what used to park straight out our house. Same with the um, bakery man, and then we had a pop and milk man. Mhm. Mm I mean, do we still have pop? Uh, uh, sorry, milkman today. I mean, I've not seen a. A milkman for years. I was starting to lose a lot of trades. Um, I think one of one of the biggest trades that seems to have dis almost disappeared is a blacksmith. I'll edit it out. Right. That's that piece. I don't need it to be absolutely perfect, but as long as the pipe fits in there, you know, uh, uh, to the depth I need it, then we're fine. Right. Best thing to do, first of all, is to pack, pack me uh, um, chisels up. Um, I do have quite a few chisels and, I've, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll show you those, that collection, but I've got to restore them. Again, I'm looking for some sort of tutorial or something to show me, you know, how to restore them um, to their former glory. Health and safety, and I'm not wearing any eye, eye protection or, or mask. Oh well. Um, one thing I will ask you, you the viewers, um, are the videos that we're putting up too long, too short? Um, please leave a comment um, below so that uh, you know we can judge the sort of length of uh, videos you you like. Because at the end of the day, the content, although we're doing it to you know give us an indication of you know a, a, sorry a record, you know it, it, we're still doing it for yourselves. Oh, that's perfect. That's ideal. And yes, I know these. Uh... Yeah, that's perfect. Right, so I'm going to take these two down, screw them into the end here so that I can put it all up together and uh, screw them into the base here. And then uh, we'll go from there. And we'll bring you back then. Right. As you can probably see, I'm not exactly in the best of places, um, but unfortunately, it must uh, it must get on. I've uh, screwed this, these these uh, studs now to the base. I've just got to screw them up into uh, the roof here, and uh, I've got two small pieces here ready to go in, and then it's uh, putting the plasterboard up. So. Without further ado, Alex is just screwing to fix them in place. Just a skirt, just I can't say it. Just yeah. skirt. To hold it in place. Yeah. I'm also trying to make sure that I sink the heads enough right in. that the plasterboard will sit on them. I mean that's not going nowhere. 
and remember that this is not a structural wall <coughs> it's literally here to hide all this lot ugly lot out of the way um, where you know when the house is finished nobody wants to be staring at that sort of thing and in all honesty the plumber didn't really think um, when he was putting it in about how it will look this is what I was saying about uh, you know why I've done so much myself uh, it's nothing against the trace stretching myself but I haven't got too much of uh, an option here right. they aren't going nowhere they're secured in place nice and strong I've just got to cut uh, two pieces to go in here and uh, that job will then be be done so um, I think we'll pause it there go and cut these two pieces because I think you've seen me cut wood before and we'll you know um, be cutting more wood fairly soon anyway so uh, yeah hi yeah welcome back um, I don't know if Sammy showed you but uh, I've completed a stud work up there ready to take uh, the plasterboard. Uh, I've got to do 805, that's 805 millimetres, like so. Um, with all the plasterboard work, I always use um, a T-square. just so much easier to do okay. the reason for 805 and not going right up to um, the roof with it uh, is that this will then fall um, halfway on the, um, the cross, cross member of the top I've tried cutting this with um, a knife on a number of occasions and uh, it, for me it just doesn't work this is fireboard it's 12.5 uh, mil thick and there's actually bits of Fiber. fiberglass um, within um, the bulb in the makeup and it actually makes it extremely difficult to uh, to cut and snap. I know though guys that have been doing this day in day out will say, "Well, yeah, I can do it with a with a knife." But uh, I've had a, a pro in who a supposed pro who did this wall for us behind me because I've never dot, dot and dabbed before. Um, however, we did the bathroom one as you can see. That was his first attempt, and he's done perfect. In my eyes, anyway. Anyway, use this here is an old saw, um, disposable. No good for cutting wood at all. Um, I've had it for years, um, and it's uh, I think it cost me about four quid at the time, um, and it's got to be ten, ten year old in there. Um, and it's what I use for cutting all my plasterboard with. The next thing I've got to do is just straighten up this, this edge here. Um, so I need it 25, which it is virtually, but 
I'm still going to just straighten that up a tad. just so that I don't scratch up um, the, the wood underneath. Especially if you're from the UK, we are, or very shortly by, by the time this video goes out, be looking for uh, native British hardwoods such as uh, elder, elm, ash, uh, sweet chestnut, horse chestnut. If you are a supplier of them or you know of a supplier, um, would you get in contact with me? Um, through email um, or through the comments below um, because we will be looking for those uh, species for making um, cabinetry, tables, furniture etc. So if you, if you could let me know of anybody who supplies them um, and what I'm not looking for is the little tiny bits that are, you find on um, eBay. Um, I'm not wor worried if it comes in planks or is, has uh, um, the wild edges to them um, or wane edges. I'm quite happy to cut them down, uh, plane them, etc. myself. So if you, you could get in contact with us, um, we'd be grateful. Um, I'm not after oak. I'm not after teak or any exotic species, but I am interested in the native British um, species such as uh, I've just mentioned the um, elm, ash, elder, um, horse chestnut and sweet chestnut. So um, I'll look forward to, to hearing from, from you guys if you know either you know somebody who sells it or um, or you're a supplier yourself. Right, I know there's a gap here, um, but again, that, that will be filled in with um, with plaster. The reason there's a gap here is because I'm just using up scraps that I've got, um, and I'm using the. I don't think I, I necessarily need to in this situation use fireboard because it's frigging water tanks behind here. There's no electrics, so uh, yeah. I've put, uh, I'm going to put this up, I'm just going to screw it into place. Right, two minutes and I'll, I'll get that in. I'm using a 3.5 by 45 mil uh, drywall screw. No, I'm not using uh, a specialist uh, screw uh, driver or screw head in the drill, I'm just using an ordinary one and making sure that I don't go in too far. Right. The hardest bit with this, to be honest, is making sure that when I, I put a screw in a place... You're not going to go through a pipe. A, I'm not going to go through a pipe. <laughs> and B, that will hold it in, the rest of the board in place whilst I put the screws in. Stay safe, if you can, why not give it a go? I'm sure you can, if I can do it, anybody can. <laughs>